What's up guys, Matt from Team VLR here and I've got a set review for Extreme Force for you guys. I haven't done one of these in a while and I figured I would do one seeing as I've got some downtime. I'll just go over some of the cards you might be interested in, some of the archetypes and what cards to look for in the set and just my overall general thoughts on the set. So I'm going to start off with the archetype that interests me the most, uh, which is Vendreds. We do have a deck profile of this on the channel i'll link it in the description below um and just in terms of the support i know a lot of people are kind of underwhelmed with the support i mean at first glance it doesn't look as good as the fa support but honestly as a player i'm not super excited but i'm kind of excited i think it's not that bad i haven't tested it out myself yet but i definitely think each of the cards that were to do have more utility than some of the vendred cards that we've had in the past such as i think the quick play spell vendred charge is a better card than vendred knights although vendred knights is searchable off terraforming but charge makes vendred revenants a lot more playable than it was before Vendred Battlelord is still a good card. Your opponents are still going to be doing things during your turn in this game. There are very few decks, if any, that don't play on your opponent's turn. And Battlelord will definitely have moments where he's a good card. I don't know if he's a 3 of or even a 2 of, but he's definitely at least a 1 of. Any searchable off preparation of rights. So I definitely think he has his use. It does suck that he's not a quick effect, but that might have been too overpowered. I don't know. He's definitely got his uses. Vendred Core is also like a decent card, it's easy to summon, it being a level 1 introduces some Link Rebo stuff, so it's definitely a good card, I do like that it prevents targeting, I mean it's not the best protection, but it is a form of protection on top of the protection we have with Revendred Origin for Slayer, and let's not forget all the effect vendreds do give the rituals extra effects so battle lord will yeah you'll have his own shock master-esque effect but you'll also get various other effects off either your hound horde or your revenants or your core maybe even your stridges if you really want to do that but the vendred support it's decent it's definitely not as good as the fa support i just don't think it's as bad as everyone has suggested that it is now moving on to the next archetype that interests me is mech knights i've actually also tested this i don't really have any replays of it i just want to test it to see if i'd want to play it in real life and it is a fun archetype i just couldn't get behind the whole the whole problem with this deck is you have to go second in order for it to be optimal unless you have a grinder goal and play but so if you want to play this deck you've got to play kaijus you gotta play board wipes probably gotta play evenly matched you just gotta the best way to play this deck is for your opponent to have a board that's set up so that you can start summoning your mech knights and going off from there and this kind of doing things in the ocg not great things but it is seeing some play it's a very fun archetype if you want to bring it to your locals by all means um in terms of picking this up right away i don't think i'd recommend it i would wait for the prices to fall and i do think they will fall for this i don't think too many people are going to be demanding it but it's very fun very interesting to play i like the artwork it's very nice and it is in the whole world legacy um uh arc i guess i'll call it that but basically the, the door is still open for more support down the line as we get more and more world legacy cards so i know mcknight's just something to keep an eye on so the next card that interests me this isn't really an archetype it's more of a card that i definitely think has a lot of potential future uses downbeat which is just the opposite of transmodify i don't know if there's an archetype right now that can really use this a lot but there could be an archetype in the future that can definitely utilize this card it's one of those cards that is going to be really cheap at release because it's not really used that much but down the line some archetype could come out and break this card so that'll be something to see if you can get your hands on next archetype is mythical beasts they are a 
pendulum based archetype that doesn't really pendulum summon instead they are basically a deck based around spell counters and they're interesting i don't know a ton about them and they aren't really being playing played in the ocg from what i can tell they're more of just a fun based archetype but i don't know if you guys know anything more about mythical beasts let me know in the comments below are they good are they worth playing let me know so next card is data transavatar kinesis which is a hand trap and basically it lets you target a monster opponent controls and just moving moving it to any other main monster zone that they have so this probably won't have some use right away but i do think down the line as we get more and more links and we have more and more co-linked monsters going off and doing their own things especially with troy mares this card could really really have its day and its use in the meta but right now probably not but definitely see if you guys can get your hands on this card next we have parthian shod which probably definitely not going to see any play in the meta honestly i don't think it is but as a generic card it's kind of interesting just to interrupt your turn opponent's turn and could have future use it's just a cool counter trap card to have next is pendulum paradox which when it first got unveiled i kind of thought it was really really good but it's not really seen playing the ocg so probably not that good it is a secret rare and it could see play in the future and it could be something you might want to pick up depending on the deck but from what I can tell, it's not going to be too heavily sought after. So then moving on to Genshi Matsu. Um, this is a card that kind of stuck, up to, stuck out to me as just a generic flip card that can be put in flip based decks now. Whether it's sub terrors or maybe even crawlers. Uh, Prediction Princess it could have some use in decks like that. It's an interesting card, especially because it can change itself to face down position which if you're playing sub terrors will allow you to summon your behemoths from your hand so that's kind of interesting to me uh so then we've got hey trunade the new giant trunade card and basically just returns all set spell and traps to the hand it's definitely not there's not really a meta right now where that's going to be too relevant but down the line we could see either the return of paleo or some other archetype that's trap based that this really messes up or maybe at your locals or some guy playing paleo or counter fairies or something like that so this could definitely be used as good bait and it'll definitely i do think it'll have its use in the future just not right now so it is something i would recommend picking up down the line when the price drops and the man isn't that high so next we have doolittle chimera which is just the fire mrs radiant or me star boy whatever it's just a generic fire link for anyone who needs that and then we have what is probably going to be the most sought after card in the set heavy metal foes electromite which is just going to break pendulums wide open and honestly just make them the next tier maybe not tier zero but they're going to be the next best deck as spirals are kind of holding that spot right now but i don't think spirals will be able to match this they will definitely be able to compete with this i do think they just i don't think they'll be on the same level as pendulums i mean that remains to be seen but this is this card is just dumb it just enables so many dumb things with astrograph sorcerer and people playing chronograph sorcerer now it's just a dumb dumb card it's definitely going to be the card to look for in at your sneak peek and when you open a box or if you open a box but yeah no this is that 100 percent going to be the most sought after card in the set so next we have a uh, revolve boot sector which is a rocket card and i just want to briefly touch on rockets they are because they're an archetype that kind of appeals to me um the field spell is kind of the only card that just stood out to me the effect it has is pretty good um it's, the entire archetype in itself isn't the greatest right now but it is an anime archetype which is super important because it just 
leaves a door open for way more support down the road. So it's definitely a card, if you're into rockets, keep your eye on this card and see if you can get a play set for yourself or however many you feel like you need. And I have another extra tab. Uh, next is Altergeist Hextia and just I want to talk about the Altergeist support in general. They're actually kind of doing something in the OCG. They are seeing a bit more play and I've been actually playing against this quite a bit on Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro weirdly and it's just been pretty tough to play against. It's a pretty good deck with this new support. So if Altergeist is your thing, definitely look for the new Altergeist support in this set. So the next card is Three Burst Dragon, which is a generic Link 3. Needs two monsters, but no tokens, or two plus monsters and no tokens. And it has been seeing some playing the OCG. To be perfectly honest with you, I'm not sure exactly why it is. So if someone could explain that to me in the comments below, I would definitely appreciate it. But uh, yeah, no, I do think this is a card to look for in the set based on its play in the OCG. I, one thing, I do look towards the OCG a lot for cards to look for, and that's especially going to be true for one of the cards coming up. So I may not know what's on about them, but if I do see them being played there in bigger tournaments, I will probably suggest picking them up. So next thing is Inspect Border, which is just great for stun or control decks. They were, you basically just don't want to let your opponent play Yu-Gi-Oh at all. And Inspect Border is definitely a thing. It is going to be secret rare for those of you who want it, so that is kind of unfortunate. But I don't think it's going to be too heavily demanded, so if you just wait a bit, you'll be able to get these pretty cheaply. So that's honestly all I have to say about that because I'm not a fan of stun decks. I kind of want to have a good back and forth with my opponent. I don't know. That's just me. So the next card is Overtex Kotals, a card that I'm kind of excited for, but a few of my friends are a bit more excited for than I am. Um, this card is just really, really good for dinosaurs. Uh, it enables way more stuff, and it makes Double Illusion Pill searchable, which is great. And it also, it, something I just want to experiment with is just a little a little dinosaur engine by sending Kotals to the graveyard and see what you can do from there. I don't know, just something that creeped into my mind with Kotal's effect so I don't know just it's a very very good card for dinos I think it'll definitely help them a lot I don't know if it'll push them back towards the top but I do think it'll definitely help them at least like stay at the top ish maybe in like the top three with spirals and pendulums after this set so the next card, and this is the card I mentioned when I looked at the OCG for, is Contacting C. This card actually kind of surprised me when I looked at the most played cards in the OCG this past week. And Contacting C was kind of up there, it was in the top 15. And it's actually a really good card. It's kind of like Flying C, but much better. Uh, basically, if your opponent summons a monster, a normal or special, you can special summon this card from your hand. And if they were to Fusion, Synchro, Xyz, or Link Summon, they must use it as a material. So, what does that mean? Um, in terms of if your opponent has a deck that just generically links summons a bunch of generic link monsters, this isn't really going to do much at all. But if your opponent is playing BAs, oh, this will destroy them. If your opponent is playing a synchro based deck, it'll also hurt them. If they're playing an XCs based deck, it'll hurt them. If they're playing a fusion based deck, it'll hurt them. This does hurt a bunch of different decks. It kind of hurts BAs. It hurts link based decks that can only link summon using a certain type of monster so it is an interesting card it is seeing quite a bit of play in the ocg right now so and it is a common so i would definitely look to see if you can pick up a play set of this and then there's underclock taker which is an interesting little card it's a link to and it points down which is kind of important it only takes two effect monsters so it could kind of be a proxy dragon alternative if you want. Um, its effect is kind of neat. It's just a nice card to have to add to your card pool. So it'd definitely be a card I would look out for. 
And then there's the FAs, or, and their support. Now, as I mentioned before, it is better than the Vendred support, which is a turn of events uh, from the past two sets where FAs weren't that playable ish unless you're my friend Grady shout out to Grady but um yeah they weren't really too playable but now with this current support or this new support they're gonna be much much more playable they become much better I really like that they're kind of a synchro based deck now and that opens the door towards win which is being used if you maybe want I know I definitely think FAs are a lot better based off the support are they overall better as vendreds as an archetype i'm not sure uh we'll kind of see over the months to come and let's just remember there's one more set of support left for both archetypes so we'll see what happens next card is something i also like uh the light sworn link monster i don't know i like light swords and this card just appeals to me it might appeal to a lot of you guys yeah, just another card to look out for. We also got Sold, which is just generic warrior support, noble knight support. Um, and then there's Cleaveward Genius, which is just the Clee Link monster, which is also kind of machine link support, kind of. That's the whole theme of the Reigns uh, Link monsters. From that pack they're just more generic than support than their archetype but yeah guys that was a set uh in terms of my overall thoughts uh yeah the set's just not that good i wouldn't go out and buy a box of this thinking you're gonna profit off it it's i don't even think it's as good as circuit break was and circuit break wasn't even that good of a set where you at least got evenly matched from that i don't think electromite's gonna be as expensive as evening matches evening matches something you can play in any deck almost whereas electromite's just pendulum based decks this could probably be compared more to code of the duelist but even then we got firewall dragon but again firewall dragon wasn't as expensive as evenly matched i think those two sets are a bit more comparable we do get some nice cards in here that do appeal to people but this isn't a set I would go out and buy sealed product for. If you want it, if you want cards from the set, go buy the singles. And oh wait, I almost forgot the most important card. How could I forget this card? Uh, I'm not gonna attempt to say the TZG name of this card, but I'm gonna go by the OCG's name, Skull Deets. Which is the card I'm actually the most looking forward to this album. So, not sure how I forgot about it. But yeah, Skull Deeds just opens up so many plays. The draw four effect and then placing three cards from your hand. Not even the cards you drew from your hand. You can play any dead, place any dead cards on the bottom of your deck in any order. It's just dumb. The effect of special summon a monster from your hand is amazing. It's great in spirals. It's great in a whole bunch of decks that can summon four monsters rather easily. Although four monsters with different names, that's the important part. But yeah, Skull Deeds, amazing, amazing card. And it probably should have been the cover card for this set. But that's just, that's just me. So, uh, yeah, back to what I was saying before. Don't buy the seal product. Uh, buy the singles. Just wait a bit. Prices will drop. Um, and then you'll be good. And honestly, save your money because there are better sets coming. We have Legendary Collection, Kaiba. And after that, Flames of Destruction is actually like a very good set. There's a lot of just good generic staple cards in there. And as I mentioned before, we'll get the new Vendred cards and new FA cards in that set. So, and whatever brains pack monsters you get from there. So, possibly Chirubini and Needle Fiber. Save your money for Flames of Destruction. Save it for Legendary Collection Kaiba's World. Don't buy a box of the set unless you really, really want to. For some reason, we will because we always do it. But just don't do it. <laughs> Anyways, guys, those are my thoughts on the cards from Extreme Force. Let me know if I missed anything. I probably did miss something, such as Tindangles, 
which I just came to my mind now, but they aren't really worth talking about. Or anything else, any other card you think has potential to be good in the future that people should look out for. And yeah, those are my thoughts. And uh, Team VLR's Matt is out.